In this video, we're going to be using Python to make passwords like this one, this one, and this one. Let's get into it. So before we start, the timestamps are on the right side of your screen, so you can skip around to whatever point in the video you want. If you're enjoying the content and you want to see more of it, then please consider subscribing with notifications on because it really helps. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the tutorial and let's learn how to generate passwords with Python. So you guys aren't going to get a face cam because my computer is really, really crappy and it couldn't handle it today, but let's just carry on without it. So we need to import two modules to create a password with Python. The first is going to be random and the second is going to be string. So random is going to allow us to choose a random set of characters for our password and string is going to allow us to find all of the different characters we're going to use for our password. So we're going to use uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers and characters and string is going to allow us to cleanly access those. Now we have to create the constants that I just talked about. So we have to create all of the letters, numbers, and characters. So first, we're going to create the uppercase characters. So we're going to say uppercase is equal to string.ascii uppercase. And we're going to do the same thing with lowercase. So we're going to say lowercase is equal to string.ascii lowercase. So these two things are going to get the uppercase and lowercase letters of the alphabet. Now let's make the same thing with numbers. Let's say numbers is equal to string dot digits. And that should not be in function. So this is just going to give us the digits from zero to nine. Finally, let's create the characters. So we'll say characters is equal to string dot punctuation. So this is just all of the other characters that we can use for our passwords to make it more secure. Now we have to make a string that has all of those joined together. We're going to use this for our random generation later on, but for now, let's just go ahead and create it by saying all is equal to uppercase plus lowercase, lowercase plus numbers plus characters. Now with this variable, we're going to be able to access it later on, and we're going to use the random.sample function to generate a sample of it randomly. Now we can ask the user for the length of the password that they want, but we're going to do that in an infinite while loop. So this is just going to run until we exit the program. So let's say while true. And now let's get the length by saying length is equal to input. And the text we're going to show is going to say length. And we're going to convert this into an integer because the length of the password is always going to be an integer. Next, we can actually create the password and we're going to generate it just with one line. So we're going to say password is equal to random dot sample. So this function just samples a string randomly. So the string we want to sample is all and we're going to sample it length amount of times. So the length of it is going to be equal to the variable we just created, which is length. So for example, if I had a length of 10 and I wanted a password that is 10 characters long, then this random.sample function would look through this string that has all of the characters and it would randomly generate a 10 digit password. Lastly, we're going to go ahead and print this out. And at this point, we can go ahead and run it. Now, since Sublime Text does not currently support user input in its terminal, we actually have to open another terminal and we can access the script from there. So I'm here in Windows Terminal, and I've accessed the folder that I want, which is Password Generator Python. And now we can run our script. So mine is called YouTube.py, so I'll say Python YouTube.py. And now our script is going to run. Firstly, it's going to ask us the length of the password we want. And let's say we want the password to be 20 characters long, and it's going to give us a 20 character long password. But as you can see here, it actually returned a list. And this is not what we want. We want a single string that has our password. And fortunately, this can be fixed really easily. So let's go back to our code. And let's add a little bit of code to convert this to a string. So basically, all we have to say is that blank string dot join this code. So essentially, what this is doing is it's converting our list into a string by joining it with a blank space in between. Now, if we had a list that had A, B, C, D, E, F, G, this would just convert that into a single string that said A, B, C, D, E, F, G. 
So with that, we can save our code and head over back to our terminal. And we can once again run our script. Again, it's going to ask us for the length that we want. And we're going to say 20. And this time, it's going to give us a string. So it's going to give us this 20 digit long string, which has a bunch of different characters, letters and numbers. So at this point, we can go ahead and copy this password and we can use it for whatever we want. Now, if you were wondering how secure this password that we generated with Python is, then you can head over to another website called howsecureismypassword.net and you can try it out. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm at the website howsecureismypassword.net and I've just copied this password and I'm going to paste it in here so we can see how long a computer would take to crack it. So let's go ahead and paste it. And as you can see, it takes three sextillion years to crack the password. So by generating your passwords with Python, you're making it so that hackers have absolutely no chance of cracking your password unless they have three sextillion years to spare, which they probably don't. Now this is really, really useful. So you can save this password to whatever password storage center you have. So you can use anything like LastPass or Dashlane to store this and you can use it for whatever website you want. But keep in mind, you should probably only use this password for one website and you shouldn't share it across other websites because that leaves a greater chance of hackers getting to it and cracking your password. But with that, I think I'm going to end the video. So if you found this video helpful for your Python projects, please consider liking it because it really helps. And if you really liked it and you want to see more projects like this in the future, make sure to subscribe with notifications on so that you never miss a new video. I hope to see you in the next video. But until then, this has been Lartech signing out. Have a good day.